It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with Chief Investment Officer, my father, the man with the plan, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's uh, shaking on this fantastic Sunday morning? Uh, good morning, Rye. It's a beautiful Sunday. It's a beautiful fall. I wish they could all be like this. I'm with you, Bob. I am not ready for winter. So uh, if it could stay like this in perpetuity, I would not complain. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we live in the Northeast. Not all of us can go south in the winter like you and the birds, Bob. Well, you know, we allow you to come to visit once in a while. So it's, uh, you know, don't complain too much. Very benevolent of you. So thank you. <laughs> well, we have a fantastic show this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about the constants of retirement. What factors no matter who you are, you're going to have to face when you retire. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about retirement regrets. We don't want you to make mistakes. We don't want you to have regrets for retirement. So we're going to tell you exactly what to prepare for so you don't make some of the mistakes that we've seen along the way in our career here as financial planners. And we have our financial pornography of the week. We scoured all the financial news. We found the most hideous examples of financial pornography so you can avoid it at all costs. Along with our spotlight segment, we have one of our star financial advisors, Frankie Lagrateria, on the show this morning, and she's going to talk about a real retirement plan that she worked on and some of the mistakes that were being made so you can avoid that with your own planning. So let's hop to it. Let's talk about retirement constants. You know, we speak a lot about how retirement planning is a very individualized process based on whatever your unique circumstances are. However, that being said, there are inevitable issues that all of us are going to have to deal with in retirement if we want to live what we call truly a stress-free retirement. And Bob, one of the most critical variables I think about is cost of living going up or what we call inflation. Right. You know, inflation is kind of like carbon monoxide. You know, you can't smell it. You can't see it. It's insidious. It's deadly, especially to your financial plan Right. Um, if you don't factor in inflation. Now, I think the Federal Reserve has done a real disservice to the investing public because they keep talking about the lack of inflation. They're not talking about zero inflation, talking about the lack of inflation. And I think what that does is it lulls people into a, um, a period, I guess, of false security because inflation yeah. is hidden. It's insidious. It's there. It compounds against you. And it's something that everybody has to factor into their planning. Yeah, that's a good point because right now we're seeing that a lot of complacency. You know, there's a feeling out there that, well, you know, interest rates are going to stay low, which is basically driven by inflation because the Federal Reserve has basically said they're going to raise interest rates when inflation starts to go up. And we have started to see signs. If you look at employment, wages are starting to go up. So there's some pressure there. And believe it or not, if you go back 12 months from now, Bob, rates are actually higher today than they were 12 months ago. So, so is you know, inflation. So that's a sign that the inflation is there. Yeah. So I would argue against conventional wisdom, and you know we don't like conventional wisdom. We're against that. Is inflation has already kicked in, and that means that cost of living is probably going to go up a lot higher than it has the last couple of years. And that has to be part of your financial plan. Well, I think it's kind of a, uh, it's a devilish deal to part of the government. They, they won't increase your Social Security payment because they say there's really little inflation. But of course, they use the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, which doesn't include food and energy. I mean, I don't know about you, Rai, but it seems like my food and energy costs go up every year. Yeah. Like you were saying, that box of cereal, the box is as big as it always has been. But when you actually go to the package inside the box... It gets smaller and smaller <laughs> with every, you know, every passing year. So it's. Well, like I don't that... keep cereal in the house, son. Ever since you moved out, so it's. Uh, <laughs> it's I've saved a ton of money. Matter of fact, my retirement is secure because I no longer spend all that money on cereal. <laughs> well, admittedly, as a grown man, I still eat cereal. <laughs> so I don't. I don't know what that says about me, but. <laughs> well, I think anybody out there who's paying their bills knows that you'll see your real estate taxes go up. You're going to see your insurance costs go up. 
your landscape bill goes up, you know, your grocery bill goes up. But, you know, that's not really the big, scary, inflationary item, is it, Rye? It's really something else. Yeah, I mean, health care is the big, what do they call it, elephant in the room, so to speak, is it's going to cost a lot. I mean, the it's kind of the good news, bad news is, hey, look, you are living longer, which is great, but living longer means higher odds to have medical expenses in retirement. And we pegged that for over a quarter of a million dollars. If you're close to 66 today and you're a couple, that's a lot of money coming out of your portfolio. And you know, in my mind, Bob, if that's not being modeled out for you by your advisor, you need to do that like yesterday because that's going to be above and beyond inflation one of the biggest costs you're going to have as a retiree. I agree, Rob. And I've been doing this for 42 years, so it, amazing. I've gotten older, and so have my clients. And a lot of my clients have been in retirement for a number of years, and I'm starting to see how heavy those costs are. You know how how punitive the cost of health care is as you get older and all the different things that um, you know impact your health. And fortunately, we plan for those for our clients. But we're seeing with a lot of the new folks that are coming on board, primarily as a result of listening to us on this radio show, is that they didn't really have a financial plan. They have an investment advisor or somebody who sells a sales and selling them investments or an annuity salesman or a stockbroker. They haven't done any really in-depth planning. And this is a big hole in everybody's plan. Yeah, I mean, I think what you have to look at is there's there's one question you need to ask yourself is, am I going to self-insure in retirement for medical costs or am I going to get some sort of insurance policy or a long-term care policy to burden some of the costs? And it's a big decision to make and there's no right answer. There's no definitely at age 55, you have to get this plan and that will cover you through life. For everybody and for yourself, that's going to be an individualized discussion to have, and that can be modeled out. And that's what you want to ask yourself too is, and your advisor more, probably more importantly, is if my portfolio takes a quarter of a million dollar plus hit, is that going to affect my lifestyle? Because if you're going to have medical costs in retirement, you don't want that chewing into the lifestyle you're accustomed to. And that's why it's so important to plan these things out and to put what I call your portfolio under that stress test. And if you're thinking to yourself, I'd like to do that. I want to see how my portfolio is going to hold up in retirement. Is it going to be able to withstand inflation, medical costs? Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's the only real full financial review available. So if you give us a call, you're one of the next 10 callers, here's what we'll do for you. We'll look at everything. We'll look at your tax return from last year. We have a CPA that'll review it to make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. How about those legal documents? You know you haven't looked at them in over 10 years. Bring them in, dust them off. We'll have our estate plan to review them for you to let you know what changes or updates you need to make to your estate plan. And then finally, bring in those statements, all those financial statements from wherever they're held, your 401ks, IRAs, brokerage accounts, insurance policies, We'll review all of it on a very simple three-page document, our investment analysis spreadsheet, and we'll look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? We'll show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio, so those hidden fees you don't, you're paying. We're going to look at diversification. What risk or pitfalls do you have in your portfolio? And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio to make it retirement ready. Then we're going to tie it all in and determine, are you going to outlive your money? Is your money going to outlive you? Looking at medical costs, inflation, using strategies we've literally worked on now for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, our team will run for you our total financial master plan. There's no obligation. There's no cost. But you have to act. Give us a call. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. This is Ryan Payne. We are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio.
It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer of Payne Capital Management. And the market continued its winning ways this week with many markets across the globe hitting new highs. And the S&P 500 is poised to make stock market history, even if it does nothing next week. The S&P is one week away from setting the longest winning streak without a 3% correction in history. The broad market hasn't experienced a decline of 3% or more since November of 2016. That's the best run in 20 years. So with the longest winning streak in market history, every major stock index that matters at historic highs, low volatility, and synchronized global economic growth, you would think the average investor would be wildly bullish. Not so, says Rich Bernstein, the former investment strategist at Merrill Lynch. Rich penned this week that actual equity allocation among individual investors, pensions, endowments, foundations, and hedge funds remains more focused on limiting their downside risk of their stock portfolio than on potential opportunities. See, investors tend to be wildly bullish when a bull market is in the bottom of the ninth inning with two outs and two strikes on the batter. We can find no investor class that's showing such over-enthusiasm for stocks. He goes on to write, there are three indicators he watches to determine if a bear market could be on the horizon. Those three things are corporate profits, liquidity, and sentiment valuation. Now, corporate profits are accelerating. Liquidity within the United States remains abundant. And stock valuations, well, they're still relatively low when you compare them to the yield available on cash and bonds. He continues to believe there's plenty of opportunity in the global equity market, and investors should ignore the media noise about short-term volatility and an imminent market collapse and stick to the business of asset allocation. So if you're sitting there wondering, do I have the proper asset allocation to take advantage of this big, booming bull market? Why sit there and wonder when you could know? Give us a call at 844 Plan NYC. That's 844 752 6692. This is Bob Payne. We're at No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Are these for us? Are these for us? Are those for us? Are these bagels for everybody? Are these for us? Grab a New York bagel, lather on some cream cheese, and keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. You know, if they're not from New York, they're not real bagels. No pain, no gain. Financial Radio, Ryan Payne, Bob Payne. And one of Bob and I's goals here at Payne Capital Management is to educate you. There's a lot of noise out there when it comes to your finances to make sure you're making the best decisions. Bob and I try to give out the best content. And in order to do that, we have just put together our guide on Truth About Taxes in Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? Money saved in taxes is just as green as any money can make invested. And if you'd like to get access to that guide, simply text 555-888, the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888, and you can retrieve your complimentary copy of our guide to the truth about taxes and retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So text the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888 and get our most recent guide on taxes and your retirement. One more time, that's 555-888, text the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H. In this segment, what we'd like to discuss are retirement regrets. Here at Paying Capital Management, We're in the unique position to analyze close to, I'd say, over 100 portfolios every month. So we already like to basically see every financial planning strategy under the sun. So what Bob and I wanted to discuss today is some of the common mistakes we see week after week so you can avoid making those same financial mistakes or have those same financial regrets in your own retirement. And one, Bob, we see over and over in people's portfolios is just don't jump into investments you don't understand. Well, that's so true, right? But I think that, what do you think the number one bad investment strategy that people jump into, what do you think it has to do with growth or income? I'm going to say it has to do with income because when it comes to retirement, we become more income focused. We want more reliability in our portfolio, not less. 
And you would think it would be very simple. When you see something that's too good to be true, you know, how could it be true? So especially with interest rates as low as they are today, you know, Ryan, I, you know if you're going to go out and get a mortgage, what mortgage rate would you be able to lock in today? I mean, rates are pretty low. So let's say on a 30-year mortgage, you're probably going to get under 4%, which that's cheap money. Yeah. So most people could borrow under 4%. So I think the first question an investor should ask, if they're getting 9 to 10%, guaranteed return or supposedly guaranteed, you know, why does that issuer have to borrow money from you at such a high rate when you, you know, who aren't an institution go out and borrow it for? Yeah, that's a great point. And I think that's probably one of the best rules of thumb, like you just said, Bob, is if it sounds too good to be true, it definitely is. And you see that a lot with a lot of these. I know we'd like to pick on annuities, but a lot of these annuities will say they have a guarantee, let's call it even more modest, 6% return. And if you look at the math, you're not really getting a true 6% return. It's not true. So you need a question when someone's offering you something like this, where's the catch? You may have one of these annuities where it's guaranteed 5%. Well, if you can't go to the bank and get a CD that's more than you know, 1%, 2% on the high end, how in the world is the insurance company able to do it? And the answer usually is, Bob, it's not exactly what it seems. Yeah, the same way, right? I see with these non-traded real estate investment trusts, somehow they're yielding 8% where you go out into the public market and you buy the highest quality real estate investment trust companies in the world, and the best you can do is get 4.5%, you know, how are they able to double that yield on an investment that's illiquid? So you've got a double whammy. It's illiquid, and they're promising you twice the return. How's that possible? Well, a lot of times, and this is why it's so important to investigate what investments you're in, they're just paying you back your own principal and calling it income. I mean, what a scam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so true. And on top of that, then you have closed-end funds that are promising 9%, 10%. We had a new client in the other day saying, boy, I love this, this Gabelli investment that I have. It's a closed-end fund. It pays 9% a year. And I said, well, how's that possible? I don't know, but they've been paying it for a couple of years. So you strip back the veneer, and what do you find? You find they're using leverage. What's the problem with a leveraged investment? Well, it's anything that helps you on the upside when it comes to leverage hurts you doubly on the bad side is a good, I'd say, paying capital management rule of thumb. And this is one of the reasons too, Bob, why it's important to examine all your investments in one place. And you know, one of the reasons why we set up our 360 portal is because you know, to have everything in one place, look at all the investments you have collectively, it's so much easier to break down and see what you own, what income you're going to have, because retirement's really about tallying up you know, what income is going to be coming in and what's the best way to produce income. So knowing where everything is, knowing what income all your investments are paying is critical. And then you can start to pick out the things that don't make sense and don't really jive with your wealth plan. Yeah, that makes so much sense when you think about the number one rule of investing is, yes, you want to get a return of your money. But when it comes to your safe dollars, return of the money is paramount. And that's the I one thing that. that you need an advisor, professional advisor to be reviewing the issuers of your portfolios, regardless of the return they've had recently, right? But look at the people that invested with Bernie Madoff. They were very happy with the returns up to the day they didn't get their money back. Yeah. And that's the thing. I mean, you have to realize when you're getting close to retirement in retirement, we always break it down between when you're working, you're in the wealth accumulation stage. And you, you, time basically lets you make mistakes. If you take too much risk, well, you have the time to make it up if the portfolio goes down significantly. You can keep adding to it because you're in your peak earning years. But as you get closer and closer to retirement and into retirement, the stakes are a lot higher and you can't afford to make the same mistakes you made when you're working. And this is one of the reasons why I think that it's so important if you're a do-it-yourself investor, it's nice to have a financial concierge or someone who's just got your back to make sure you're making the right decisions. And I think you know, a lot of times you think, well, I've been doing it myself forever. If I hand it over to somebody, I'm going to relinquish control. And the analogy I like to give Bob is, you know, I'm a very avid guitarist. I love playing guitar. That's what I understand. I mean, I've listened to you play guitar now for 40 odd years. <laughs> Better or for worse? Say, like 35 years, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe unfortunate for you. I'm not sure. But, you know, I, I play a lot. And I, you know, I actually I read a lot of stuff online. I get a lot of my information online. And I consider myself more of an intermediate to an advanced player. But even me, who I consider myself self-proclaimed a really good guitarist, I have a coach. I take guitar lessons. Because as good as I am as a hobbyist, 
because I have my profession. I'm a financial planner. There's so many things I just don't know. And the nice thing about the guitar teacher, that's his whole life. That's all he does. I'm still free to play, practice on my own, but he gives me tips and gives me insight that gets me to where I want to get to faster because that's all he does. And I think that's the idea as you get close to retirement is having that coach or having somebody that's just your sounding board and has your back to make sure that, again, you get from point A to point B, as we always say, with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Well, it makes so much sense, right? I mean, people don't need a financial dictator. They need a financial advisor. And I think everyone needs a different perspective and a second opinion. And if you'd like to have that second opinion, what we'd like to offer you, if you're one of the next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for retirement, My son Ryan and I will run for you our renowned Total Financial Master Plan. Now, there's no obligation. There's no cost. And if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what you can expect on your visit. We're going to review your tax return to make sure that you're utilizing every tax benefit that's available to you, both now and with the pending tax law changes. We're going to look at your estate plan. We want to be certain that your estate plan is not an IOU to the IRS. We want to be certain that that money that you've earned, that you've worked so hard for, your wealth is going to pass to the people that you intended to go to. And lastly, we're going to look at all your investments. We want to review all your investment statements from every different financial institution, regardless of where you custody your money, and reduce it to our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. Now, this is a simple three-page document that breaks down all the key elements of a successful investment strategy, diversification, fees, income. We want to be certain that you're diversified across asset classes and within asset classes, and to be certain that you're getting your piece of this big, booming bull market. We want to look at fees. You know, one of the biggest hindrances to achieving your investment goals is overcharging yourself on your investments. We'll look at all the costs both the obvious and the hidden fees that are buried deep in that prospectus of that mutual fund or in that annuity contract. And lastly, we want to make sure that you can optimize the income. Remember, income is paramount to your retirement goals as opposed to growth. And income is much more dependable than capital gains. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one comprehensive wealth projection, which will answer that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or will your money outlive you? And we're going to do that utilizing strategies that we have been perfecting now for over four decades. Yes, that's for 40 years. We've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, with your values, and do that with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Give us a call now at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 844- Seven five two six six nine two. Take advantage of the only true full financial review available at eight four four Plan NYC. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. Be one of the next few callers at eight four four Plan NYC. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. For all the latest information and news that you need to retire successfully, make sure you go to BeBullish.com. That's BeBullish.com. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial advice to help protect you from making any ill-advised financial decisions. Bob, what would you find out there in the egregious world of financial pornography this week? Well, Ry, all week long, Richard Thaler was all over the news. He was interviewed by every major outlet, every media outlet. He was written up in every article. And the thing is, he won the Nobel Prize by saying that stupid things can happen in financial markets. Can you believe that? (laughs) Elaborate. So you're saying he has the Nobel Prize for saying something that simple. Elaborate, Bob. (laughs) Well, actually, it wasn't that simple. I I digress a little bit. But basically, what he did was explain why stupid things can happen in financial markets. And he won that Nobel Prize for basically applying psychology to economics. 
And he's helped everybody. You know, everybody out there is a beneficiary of that way of thinking. But, you know, why he thinks that way is because everybody's been telling us for the last 40, 50 years that markets are very efficient. Well, if they're efficient, why do they go up more in January than they do in other months? And why are closed-end funds, how come they don't necessarily reflect their underlying asset values? You ever wonder about that, Ry? Yeah, I mean, it, it, things are always mispriced in the market because, you know, human nature makes us bad investors. You know, irrationality tends to rule the day, especially when it comes to things like investments and market investments where you can see the price every single second of the day. That really plays with your psychology. Well, see, now you could have won the Nobel Prize had you put that into a white paper or a book before <laughs> Richard did. I mean, it's kind of messed up. I felt like that was uh, my ship was coming in. So I was a little disappointed when he <laughs> won it first. <laughs> but basically, that's what he found out, Rye, because and we've learned this about investors with their own experience as investors and working with investors. What do you think investors hate more, losing or winning? I think losing by far. Losing yeah. is psychologically is way worse than winning. And what do they focus on? I'm going to say not losing is the normal operating uh, procedure. And that's basically his thesis, because as average normal human beings, which every investor is, even Warren Buffett, we tend to focus on the short term because we're more worried about losing money than we are about making money. Now, even in this big booming bull market that we've been in, where we made new highs every week for the last couple of weeks, most of the calls we get from people are, should we get out now? That's the thing that's amazing. To your point, Bob, I mean, this is one of the longest economic expansions of all time. You know, one of the things that you look at as a, maybe it's more anecdotal, but the quote unquote top of a market is when everybody is exuberant. Everyone is really bullish. They're feeling good. You know, I remember back in the late 90s with the tech bubble, there was a new, new economy. There's no such thing as downturns anymore. And you're seeing none of that. It's just mm -hmm. like right now, it's kind of that all or none. You're sitting with tremendous amount of money in cash, still figuring out, do you need to get it invested? Do you sit in cash and wait for the crash? Or you have a lot of money in the market, specifically the US market, and you're waiting for the shoe to drop. You're thinking, do I keep it in here? Do I get it out now? Because that crash is going to come. So we're in a really weird place here where markets could continue to go a lot higher, but Everyone right now, you know, you're probably very afraid and worried about this eminent correction that may or may not happen. Well, that's the first lesson I learned was from the investment strategist that was at my firm my first year as a 21 year old, you know, working on the street of dreams. And basically, ago, right, what he always said was stocks outperform bonds and bonds outperform cash. So buy stocks, right? But people don't do that, right? They overreact. And as a result, because they're not focusing, you know, on their long-term plan, they're focusing on short-term losses, you know, it tends to make stocks cheaper and gives them more room to rise in the future. So actually people's bad behavior makes it better for all of us who are informed long-term investors. Right. And that's why it's important to have a discipline in place with your investing as opposed to one of the things we talk about is the most dangerous thing you can do is anticipate. And in that same vein, Bob, I found my own financial pornography this week. I found an article that was basically entitled, Why the Market is Now Vulnerable to a Selling Stampede. Oh, you just stampede. imagine all I those. Like that. <laughs> right? I mean, you can just imagine, uh, I don't know, I see lots of Get out of before you get running. trampled. Exactly right. Exactly right. So that's the kind of stuff that we see. And the thesis here is the Federal Reserve has already hiked its benchmark short-term interest rate three times in the past year. And now the odds look very good that the Fed's going to raise interest rates come December. First off, what we don't realize is if the Fed's going to raise interest rates again, that means the economy is doing well. That drives me nuts, Bob. Mm -hmm. That's actually a positive, not a negative. That's true. Even though this has been the third longest expansion in history, it's been very slow and steady. And people don't factor that in. And the Federal Reserve has been reticent to raise rates. And now that they are, that says, hey, things are good. That's the best news we could possibly hear. And I think that's the way you need to look at things right now is not when is the market going to correct or when are we going to see this massive stampede of selling. But right now we're in the midst of a bull market. We have what we call a healthy tortoise type of economy. Mm -hmm. It's not the jackrabbit running really quick that's going to run out of steam. It's a slow and steady type of thing. So as an investor, you have to start thinking about building your portfolio for the long term, knowing that the economy is a healthy tortoise. And that's very good as an investor. 
Well, I mean, it all ties back into why Richard Thaler won the Nobel Prize. It's really about long-term investing. It's about patience. It's about investing on goals, investing on purpose, trying to predict what's unpredictable, trying to know what's unknowable is a fool's errand at best. And probably why over the last 20 years, because of this fear of another correction that people have experienced in the past, it's kept people on the sidelines and it's kept their performance less than the return they could have gotten on cash in the last 20 years. That's right. So if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need to get my emotions out of this game. (laughs) I need to get serious about investing my money for my goals, not trying to be master of the universe, not trying to figure out the next move. Here's your shot to do it. Uh, We have a couple slots left. If you're one of the next few callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do it with no obligation or cost. It's the only full retirement plan available. So take advantage of it. What we'll do is we'll look at everything. That means we'll look at taxes. If you bring in last year's tax return, we'll have our CPA review it to make sure you're not paying unnecessary taxes. If you bring in those legal documents, that means bring in that will you wrote 20 years ago. We'll have our estate planning partner review it to let you know what changes you want to make and make sure your estate plan is up to date. And then finally, bring in your investment statements. That last month's statement may have just come in. Let's bring them in, put them in the brown paper bag. We're going to break everything down for you on a simple three-page spreadsheet, our investment analysis spreadsheet. And we're going to determine, number one, your diversification. What risk do you have in your portfolio? What pitfalls? Bob and I will point it out to you. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? There's a lot of hidden costs in your portfolio. We're going to break down all the fees and see how we can reduce costs in your portfolio. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. How do you increase or optimize the income on your portfolio? We'll show you how to do that too. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we have literally worked on for over 40 years to make sure that you will not outlive your money. Your money will outlive you and get you from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is call 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over $200,000 for your retirement, our team will run for you our total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost, no strings attached, but act now. Give us a call at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob and Rye. We are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. How's that saying go? No pain, no gain? It's the name of our show, too, but we spell pain, P-A-Y-N-E. It's no pain, no gain. Financial Radio, Bob Payne, Ryan Payne, and Bob and I, our mission in life is to make sure that you have your financial life in order and you're making the best decisions. You know, there's a lot of information out there. Bob and I like to weep through it to make sure you're making the best choices when it comes to your retirement planning. And that's why we put together our newest guide, Truth About Taxes in Retirement, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So if you want to get a free copy of that guide, text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. Again, that's the word BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555 888-888, and you can retrieve a free copy of our guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? Money saved in taxes is so critical. We're going to help you do that. Go ahead and text to 555-888, the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, and retrieve your free copy. And if you ever want to learn more about Bob and myself, you can always check us out on the World Wide Web at bullish. Dot com. That's bbullish.com. You can see how great Bob's hair really is in, in real life. <laughs> and <laughs> if you ever have a question for myself or Bob, you can email us questions at bbullish.com. That's questions at bbullish.com. Bob and myself will answer your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we will answer it right here on the show. And as every week, we did get some 
pretty good questions, Bob. I the like first that. one comes in from Andrew. He's in Parsippany, New Jersey. He writes in, Bob, should I work with a younger financial advisor with less experience or somebody who's my age but might retire at the same time I do? What do you think about that, Bob? Well, what I think about that, Rye, is that uh, you know, I'm a baby boomer. And you know how baby boomers think. Nobody worked harder. Nobody studied more. Nobody's as dedicated as a baby boomer. So I don't think anyone should work with anyone who's not a baby boomer. What do you think about that? Well, I think the problem is, right in Andrew's question, is the average financial advisor now is probably someone in their late 50s. And the reality of it is they probably are going to be retiring with you. And that would be a buzzkill to me, Bob, if I'm working really hard. I built this great relationship. And then all of a sudden, I'm ready to retire. And that person I trust is going to be next to me on the beach, retired as well. So I don't like that at all. <laughs> I understand that. And I think that's a big conundrum. I mean, really, do you want to be laying next on the beach with your financial advisor next to you? Who's watching the store? But you know, I think that's the biggest and most difficult challenge for an investor in terms of hiring a financial advisor. I mean, I remember back in 1975, you know, here I am a newly minted graduate and I'm working for Mother Merrill in downtown, you know, Merrill Lynch, downtown Philadelphia. And I got to tell you, I not only did I not have a clue, I didn't have a down payment on a clue. I don't care how well educated you are. When you're 22 years old, you don't know anything when it comes to helping people achieve their goals or able to do the type of in-depth financial planning that we do now. On the other hand, a lot of great advisors out there who are in their late 50s, early 60s, they're getting about to retire. I mean, they've got a lot of wisdom. They're really good at what they do, right? But they're going to be retiring. So what should a person do? I mean, what's the best situation to look into? Well, I think it's kind of like um, some of these practices with doctors. I have the younger doctors and the older ones for the wisdom. And similar to how we set up pain capital management, where our average advisor is under 30, but they're using processes that you and I've created now for over 40 years. So I think you, know, you want the younger advisor to be the one servicing your relationship because, again, you are going to retire. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to want to deal with the same person that you've been dealing with, just like my doctor. You know, I have a, a tremendously intimate relationship with my doctor. They know everything about me from a physical standpoint. And you don't want to change that. You don't want to change that mid game, you know? So I think, you know, having someone who is younger is better, but you also want the methodology. You want the advice from somebody who's been in the business a long time. So coupling that together to me is kind of the sweet spot when it comes to having an advisor, especially when it comes to your retirement planning, which is so, so critical. And not to blow our own horn, Rye, but I, I think everybody should work with us because we have three generations working for you when you hire paying capital. You know, you got the uh, the baby boomer with the gray hair and the stomach and the scar tissue and the stomach lining. We have the Generation Xer with you, you know, who's going to succeed me. Then we have your brother and, and, and all our millennial advisors that are here to help. So you have a perspective from three different generations that are going to be here a long time after not just me, but even you when we're gone, you know, paying capital will live. Yeah, well, unfortunately, I have the, the scars on my back now, too. So <laughs> not as pretty as it used to be. It's unavailable. It's, unaffor it's, it's inevitable, right, in yeah. our business. So hopefully you don't have the gray hair, that great head of blonde uh, hair. So, if you look at my you beard, know, it's, it's not pretty. <laughs> um, on that point. So the next question comes in from Jay in Nassau County. He writes in, Ryan, I'm worried about a market meltdown, but my brother is on the Trump train. What does that look like? Mm. And thinks What's we have another few good years. What do you think? And this goes back to what we had talked about earlier in the show, Bob. It's just, look, first off, no one can predict the future. Uh, if we could mm -hmm. do that, we always joke, Bob, we'd be on our yachts, you know? Right. So true, right? It's just, you know, hey, look, people are, are everybody's the same. And, you know, that 2008 bear market and that recession in some cases, it's done severe damage to certain investors in terms of their psychology. They have to be re-educated, right? They have to go through a process. And I don't blame them for being scared. That was a scary time. But it was temporary, just like every other correction in history. Yeah, and it's not being determined on what policies are out there right now. All these things that you think are going to have a huge impact on your portfolio. You know, the smartest strategy is the one that doesn't care. And you might be saying, what do you mean by that? And what I mean by that is the one that is completely soulless to what's going to happen next. Because, you know, it's the old joke, Bob, that you like to make, you know, why are there unexpected moves in the market? 
I always wondered about that, Rye. Why are these moves unexpected? Because, Bob, they're unexpected. (laughs) But of course. And that's the point, is you don't know. There's no way to anticipate the things we don't know. So if you have a portfolio that says, I'm really ready for anything that can happen, you're always going to be in the right position because invariably you're always going to have money in the right place. And a perfect example of that is nobody wanted to own international stocks in their portfolio two years ago. No one mm-hmm. could have told you that there was going to be this huge turnaround internationally and international growth was going to pick up. Really, it was kind of like it turned on a dime. It, we went from thinking the international market's going to be dead for years to all of a sudden it's a great place to have your money. By not anticipating that, that's the real secret. No, that's so true. And you know, if you just go back and look at the history of the financial markets, what people tend never to do because it's always those four most dangerous words from John Templeton – it's different this time. Now, you've been in this business close to 20 years, right? When has it been different? Unfortunately, Bob, as much as we like to believe, the circumstances are different, but markets tend to play out those cycles are very, very much the same over time. And that's really what happens, right? You have to have a long-term perspective. I don't care if you're my age, 64 right now. You know, I've got 20, 30, maybe 40 more years. That's long-term in the market, in life, in the economy. And if you'd like to know if you're positioned properly for the long term, not the short term, not the flip of a coin, what the market's going to do tomorrow, but what's going to do for the rest of your financial life, what we'd like to offer if you're one of the next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for your retirement, Ryan and I will run for you our renowned total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost. And if you're one of the next few lucky callers, here's exactly what you can expect. We want to Review your tax return, not us, but our CPA partner, who's going to make sure that you're utilizing every tax benefit that's available to you legally. Secondly, we're going to look at your estate plan. We want to be certain that your estate plan is not an IOU to the IRS. And lastly, you know, we just finished a quarter. Let's take all those statements. I don't care if you had time to open them. Throw them in a shopping bag. Pick up the phone. Make an appointment. We're going to take all that information and reduce it down to a simple three-page document, our famous investment analysis spreadsheet. This is going to analyze your portfolio and break it down to the three core elements of a successful investment strategy, diversification, cost, and income. We want to be certain that you're getting the return for the risk you're taking. We're going to look at all of your portfolios and break it down across asset classes and within asset classes to be certain that you're getting your piece of this big booming bull market. We're going to look at your fees, the cost. One of the biggest reasons people fail as investors is because they're overcharged by their investments. We want to look at all the costs of your portfolio, including those costs that are buried deep in the prospectus of a mutual fund or in that big fat annuity contract. And lastly, we want to make sure you're optimizing the income. We want you to get all the income you're entitled to because in retirement, income is much more dependable than capital gains. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, which will project your wealth to be certain that you're going to outlive your money, which will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or will your money outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my son and I have been perfecting now for over 40 years. That's correct. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from their financial point A to their goals, to their dreams, to their point B with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Give us a call now at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. We have a couple slots left. If you have over 200000 safe for retirement, that's 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-752-6692. It's the only real full financial review available at 844-PLAN-NYC. NYC, that's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain. And you know, one of the goals Bob and I have here at Payne Capital is to educate you to make sure you're as retirement ready as possible So if you'd like to get access to our latest guide, The Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA? We do not want your IRA to be what we call an IOU to the IRS. 
you can retrieve a free copy of the guide if you just text simply the word bullish, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. Again, just text the word bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888, and you can get our latest guide that's truth about taxes and retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want it to happen, so text us at 555-888, the word bullish. And now it's time for my favorite part of every week, and that's the spotlight. Each week we dissect a real financial plan, and we uncover what we call the flaws or pain points. That's P-A-Y in it for the record. So you can avoid the same mistakes in your own planning. And we have a very special guest on the show this morning, Francesca, quote-unquote Frankie, Lagrateria, one of our star financial advisors here at Payne Capital. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, Frankie. So you worked on a case uh, this past week with the retiree, and you found some mistakes with some of the decisions he was making. So what flaws or pain points did you find in this specific retirement plan? Yeah, so I had a, I had a guy that I met with, and he's actually getting ready for retirement. And one of his big concerns was consolidation. Consolidation, just hoping that you know once he you know retires, everything's a little bit easier. And then also once he passes on, it's easier for his beneficiaries. Um, so currently, this man has about fifteen different accounts. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm looking at them now. Fifteen, and these are all different custodians. So it's like you have an account here at one firm, then in another firm. I would cry at tax time. This is unbelievable. You see this, Bob? <laughs> oh, it's incredible. So yeah, what, what what was his feelings like? I can't take this anymore. I can't have all these statements coming in every single month like what's going on yeah he's actually pretty nonchalant about it he was like uh, i think i could do better i think i could do better consolidating this and then when i saw the accounts, i was like yeah <laughs> we definitely can do better sir um so the big thing about that is not only is you know to ryan's point is super annoying and a burden during tax time but if you have you know five thousand in an ira five thousand in an ira ten thousand in an ira these are three different plans that you can only do so much with. It makes so much more sense to consolidate it and have one you know, large IRA with the bulk of the assets. That way you can do more. You can do more investments. You can do more strategy. It just is a lot better overall. Well, Frankie, maybe the thought was if I set up all these different accounts, I'm diversified. Is this portfolio diversified? You know, that's definitely a thought, Bob. And actually, uh, because there's three different advisors who are definitely not a buddy-buddy talking to each other, sharing strategies, he has about 55% of his equity assets all in large cap U.S., which is great right now. But, you know, as we know, what is good may come down. Well, that's the thing, that's too, is we have... advantage of people using our 360 financial portal. Even if they want to keep assets at other custodians, now that we're able to view it all into one portal, we can see if there's overlap on the strategies that some other advisor may be using. That's not necessarily in a client's best interest. I mean, when you have a lot of something that does well, it's great. What about when it doesn't do well, Frankie? How does that end up? Yeah, exactly. It ends up with a, a lot of people were feeling in 2008. Yeah, I mean, how much is he going to love us with that 360 portal? Because it's like, yeah, let's you can see where everything is at all times. And you know exactly where your diversification is. And speaking of that, Frankie, I noticed he has one investment in here that he's paying 3.57% a year in fees. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, that was a hefty one. He was That's uh, one of those annuities where you think you're just paying the annuity fund fees, and then you realize you're also paying the riders, and then you have the bells, the whistles, the songs, the dances, and uh, you're paying almost 4%. That's unbelievable. He, so he had no idea he was paying that much in that annuity? Not that much, yeah, definitely. That was a, a nice surprise for him. So that's uh, you know something that you want to consider. You want to look at you know, all of your accounts that you have and your 15 different uh, custodians and see, you know, what am I paying? What am I yielding? What am I invested in? So, well, the biggest problem big I one. see with your analysis that this client has is with all this money, they're not generating any income. Absolutely, Bob. So the big thing is, and I see this so much, Bob, where it's, I say, why do you have so much in cash? And they're just, well, we might do this and we might do that and we might do this. And I think it's a big concern that if you know that you're going to need this cash in the next six months to maybe even a year, yes, keep it in cash. You don't know what's going to happen. But if you're just sitting there on a pipe dream that one day you're going to buy a house, <laughs> you need to make a decision because you're wasting, you're wasting your money. You're wasting your return. Yeah, it's a 0% well, return on a half a million dollars of a $1.5 million account. That's a third of his money doing nothing. Doing nothing. And so it's sometimes you just need kind of the hard push to say, you know, are you going to be a, a 
you know, a real estate broker or, or what have you. Um, are you going to buy this, you know, piece of property? Either do it or don't because you're, you're wasting your retirement. So when you I know, told them, you know. A lot of people you know, view investment sometimes as buying low and selling high. But, you know, in your analysis, you're able to increase his yield by close to 2%. And on a $1,500,000 over 20 years, that's 700000 you know, almost three quarters of a million dollars more in principle just from simply compounding at 2% higher than they're currently compounding. You know, that uh, that's amazing. That, that always amazes me when you see how compound works for you as opposed to against you. Absolutely, Bob. And just like I said, he's getting close to retiring. Um, and he's, when he saw those numbers in front of him, he was like, wow, this would supplement my lifestyle. This is how I'm going to get through retirement without having to open a lemonade stand. <laughs> well, hey, that could be a nice supplemental income. But yeah, and that's the thing is you want to model out what incomes you have coming in, like assessing, like you did here, Frankie, he has Social Security is coming in, if there's any pension income. But man, if I'm in his shoes and you're showing me the income on your portfolio can go from $16,000 a year to $49,000 a year, which is over $32,000 a year. That's insane, by the way. And a more conservative, better diversified portfolio. Yeah, absolutely. And not 3.5% in fees. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, so lower <laughs> fees, higher income. Um, no, fantastic job on this. And this is exactly what our total financial master plan looks like. So if you're thinking to yourself right now, I would love to know what hidden costs are in my portfolio. I have a thousand accounts at a th or in this case, 17 accounts at different custodians. I'd love to see a consolidated view of everything, have my own personal portal in a, you know, a 360 portal. Here's your shot to do it. We still have a couple slots left. If you're one of the next few callers and you have over $200,000 safe for retirement, myself, Bob, and Frankie, superstar Lagrateria, will run for you. Our total financial master plan will do with no obligation or cost. And it's a full review just like this. Do you want to know how you can increase the income on your portfolio? In this case, $30,000 a year more in income. That's so critical for retirement. Do you know what diversification you have in your portfolio? If you have a lot of accounts, how do you know if all your money is in large cap growth stocks, in US stocks, global stocks? We'll break down all the diversity for you so you can really see it right through our portal. And what about fees? Are there hidden costs on your portfolios? Do you have annuities where you're paying almost 4% a year? That's real money. We'll show you how to reduce the cost on your portfolio as well. Then we're going to tie it all together. We're going to run the numbers to determine, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now we've literally worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. You have nothing to lose and everything to gain. So give us a call at 844 Plan NYC. That's 844 752 6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will run for you our total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation, there's no cost. Just give us a call. 844 Plan NYC. That's 844 752 6692. All right. Another great show. And I always like when we have Frankie. Do you like adding that new title in there? Superstar? Lagrataria? I'm going to add it to my business cards. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it makes sense at this point. I think we're, if we're going to get real, <laughs> we should do that. Big Bob, what's on tap for the rest of the weekend? Well, Rob, i got to rest up because it's going to be a big week on the Street of Dreams. Oh, man. I can't wait. Can't wait. Well, have a great weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.